We're back again. This is the introduction to episode 9. It's going to be multi-part because I have so much to cover. Again, we're at Revelation 17, verses 1 through 18 is the meter, which is the whole chapter. The anaphoric center is verses 6 through verses 8. And verse 8 ends here, which is at 534 and verse 9 starts here ending at 544 AD 456 and then the final end of it is at 567 the final end of the time that's covering the guy who comes to power Justinian versus Justin Justin technically dies see here's Justin he technically dies, and there's there's all kinds of talk about this. He technically dies in August 1 of 527, in which case, depending on what fiscal year John is using, he would be another Kaiser, satirically and you know unfavorably truncated to a mere Kai, a mere connective of history. Kai Uk Esten then is satirical against Justin the first that he's not specifically the Kai this is where Justinian technically starts now depending on who you talk to and there's a lot of debate about this still when Justin came to power right here at the middle at that O in Bleponton that was when Anastasius died, and that was when Justin the first came to power. Depending on who you look at and who you talk to, Justinian was still the power behind the throne at that time. There is some debate about that. It is certain that he had a great deal of power soon after Justin the first took over, exactly when it flipped to Justinian is hard to say. He wasn't actually named co-emperor until the last four months of Justin's life. And if John is using the sacred Hebrew calendar for his fiscal year, that new year could have started right here anyhow. Okay, but I only had so much space to write all this. So I'm sort of like putting Justin one here as if he died at the end of 526 when he really doesn't die then but he does hand over the reins in the first first couple of weeks of April okay while the sacred year ends on the vernal equinox and therefore the new year begins at sundown on the vernal equinox and so that would be considered 527 anyway. But if you're using end of year, you can say, well, it's end of 526 on the vernal equinox because he hands over power. He's sick. He has a wound in his foot that festers, and he di and eventually dies of it. Okay? So we're going to go with 527 as a start. That's typical um, way that Roman historians handle it. So we're going to go with that, too. Now, I'm going to have to sidetrack after this because I need to show you what John is doing with these four, these highlighted yellow um, numbers because what they end up being is he is reconciling to the different sets of 490 accounting that God started with Adam's fall. All right, we are still on that accounting system. Time is alone in 490 year units. And hopefully you've already gone through, as I had asked at the end of episode 8, you've already gone through um, a refresher course, or at least your first time, in how God orchestrates time. If not, I'm going to give you a real quick refresher course, because it will be easier for me to cover this and this and this, and then he keeps on doing it here and here, why is John, does John keep on reconciling to 490? Because there are multiple sets of books. Excuse me, that's my dishwasher making a banging noise. All right. 
So I'm going to have to stop where we are before even getting into what Justin's reign was like, starting here, and give you a refresher course in the 490. And again, we have to start it at Adam's Fall. Now, I could spend a lot of time going into a side trip telling you how I discovered this. But instead of doing that, I'm just going to tell you that I learned it from Daniel 9. The way the phraseology works in Daniel 9.24, it occurred to me that God was amortizing time. Amortizing is a fancy word for loan. Okay, how do you, how do you pay off a loan? Amortization is a way you figure out how to pay off a loan. Time is a loan. And... I couldn't figure out exactly what he was doing, so I had to go back to Genesis 5. This is all the material in the begats of Genesis 5. You can add it up yourself. And I just plotted it out in a worksheet. Okay? I did not use anything other than the Bible to come up with this. The thing I wanted to stress, however, is that birthdays can only be governed by solar year. So all the whole Jewish accounting with the lunar year is flat wrong. And a lot of Jews know that. Okay? But I don't use lunar years. And if you use lunar years, you'll never get the Bible dates right. So these are solar years. These are not lunar years. These are their birthdays. Okay, well, you can be born at the beginning of a year, or you can be born at the end of a year, or you can be born in the middle of the year. So the time distance between, say, Adam being 130 years after his fall and Jared 622 years after Adam's fall, the yellow column is measured years after Adam's fall, not even his, you know, anniversary. It's just after his fall. Well, that's going to, that could be, you know, at the end of, and this one happens to be, at the end of the 492nd year not 490. And why is that? Because when during the 130 years after Adam's fall did Adam mature? What if he matured later? Okay, in that year. And what if Jared's birthday, okay, is late in the year? Well, then that could easily add up to plus two. All right? But you'll notice it's still 492. There is something about a 490 that's going on here, and this isn't the only place. Okay, if you're familiar with this material already, I'm sorry to bore you. But when you get down here to Noah, he gets his kid, his sign that he's super matured. That's what the kid's birth signify. In 1556, okay, 490 years after that is 2046. And that is when Abram supermatures and has his son. 2046 is 490 plus 1556. So that's exactly 490. So you see the number is relevant. And it, this kind of convergence keeps on happening in the timeline. So all the Bible dates are alerting you to this time structure. So what I had to do is I plotted them all out. I looked at the kings. I looked at all those dates. And I just went with what the Bible says to find out what numbers it's plotting and why. And they all hub around the kind of time structure I'm going to tell you. Okay? Um, I'm going to take a little break. And I'll combine the next increment with this one. in a minute.